before we start, I want us to take a moment and practice writing and drawing lightly. So maybe on our scratch paper at our table, you can write your name and then write your name as lightly as you can. So I wrote my name normal. Now I'm gonna write my name really light. Can I write it even lighter? You betcha. I wanna see how light you can write it. Maybe you can even draw a really slight smiley face. You gotta be able to see it. If you can't see it, it defeats the purpose. Um, because we're gonna be drawing really lightly on our paper. Um, now my paper is up and down. I'm gonna have a longer paper. I'm actually gonna make it even longer. There we go. That's too wide, there we go. So I got a long skinny paper because um, I wanted it to kind of remind me of like Fan Kwan's artwork, his famous one. I'm gonna just sketch out what I wanna do. So I'm gonna start with the background. I'm gonna do some mountains back here. Um, I'm gonna do some water. I'm gonna do a river that's kind of coming out. Maybe it's curving around a little bit. Things in the front foreground are bigger, right? Because they're closer to us. So this front of the river is bigger. But I'm not gonna do the same thickness all the way down. That, that, that's not right, because it's getting smaller as it goes farther away. So I'm gonna slowly get a thinner and thinner and thinner river. I wanna have some other stuff in the foreground, maybe um, a little house, maybe a tree. because so I usually start with like a Y tree right and then I start adding like Y's on it but this time I do like wavy lines for the Y's it's kind of a craggly old tree so that's a wavy Y wavy Y maybe I'll do like another little tiny tree back here I want to kind of show that it's getting farther away we'll see if how that works out um, I'm gonna start with my black um, here is my watercolor. If you have a color that looks like this, empty, um, let me know, I'll get you a new one, okay? I don't want you using colors that are not there anymore. I'm gonna start with my black. You can use full colors if you would like to. Um, I am gonna use mostly my black because I want it to look kind of like ink. I think I'll have a couple accent areas. So for my mountains, I'm doing it really dark at the top. And then I'm just taking water on my brush, kind of pushing it down. A little bit more water on my brush. And it's gonna kind of fade out a little bit. Ooh, fun. And then while it's still wet, I just cleaned off my brush, got just water. And I'm pushing it down. Cleaned off my brush. Be careful, if your water's wet, like if these are touching, this hill is gonna start to bleed into those mountains, and I don't want that. I want it to stay its own independent hill, so if it does do that, it's okay. We can fix it later. That's what I'm talking about when uh, my painting accidentally bleeds into another one, like if this bleed blood up here, um, that's because it's wet on wet. When it doesn't, when, when this dries, like when I do my tree on here, I can't do my tree right now because it's such a wet background. Um, but when that dries, I can do wet, wet watercolor on dry, dry paint. So just kind of being aware, is this wet right now? Does it feel cold? Okay, yeah, let's just give it a second. Like it's a bit more dry up here, so I'm gonna work on my tree. My Y. Doing another Y. I 
feel like I'm missing some things over here, so maybe I'll do some little rocks. I'm gonna do some like light rocks. So I grab a little bit of black, kind of dab it on my paper towel to make sure it's um, not super dark. Of course, they're getting smaller as I go farther into the middle ground and then to the background. I did some grass over here just for funsies. And you know, I think I'm gonna do a little bit of blue in my project. I mostly have it black and white, but maybe I'll just do like a tiny bit of color. So I'll get a little bit of blue. I'll just do my water. Yeah, that makes it a little less stark. Uh, maybe I'll do the same kind of thing with my sky. Um, I'm gonna make it really light. Sometimes what you can do, this is what I actually do use this over here if I wanna use a little bit of black over there. And then add some water to it. You can make it a little bit lighter. Until you know you've got a lighter color. You can see that that is a light gray over there. And I can take that and add it to my sky. I could even add a little bit of light blue to that over here. Stormy color, pretty. And then finally, I'm going to write my initials kind of in a stacked format. This is, I'm actually going to do it in red. You could do it in black if you don't want to have this red popping out. Um, make sure it's dry. I'm going to write my initials. Get out of the way, watercolor. First letter of my first name, Hannah. Oh, last letter of my last name, Roselle. Or first letter of my last name. If you want to, you could do a square around it or a circle around it. And that's gonna be our little signature. I'm excited to see what you guys create for your watercolor painting, your landscape. So one thing you may choose to add to one of your paintings is some chopsticks or some extra papers. So I, um, you could just glue the chopsticks right onto your painting if you want to and roll it up. Um, I kind of like the top and the bottom of my painting, so I'm gonna be adding these extra papers to it, which will have the chopstick rolled into it. So kind of make it look like a scroll. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start um, by putting some glue on here. There are some things that our glue bottles are better for, and this is one of those things. So just got enough glue right there. I'm gonna kind of center my chopstick and roll it on in. I don't want my chopstick to be moving around, so I'm gonna want it to be secure. And I'm going to fold it over. Now if it comes undone, that means you probably need to hold it. I'm gonna put another little bit more glue there. sure it's even. I'm making sure my glue bottle's not all the way over there. I really want to hold it for a while. Now, if you are lazy like Miss Roselle, you can always find something to set it on there. Ha ha! While you work on your other one. Now, I folded my first one like this, where it just had the tab going over. I could roll it as well if I wanted to get that effect. Um, I'm gonna make mine the same, so I'm gonna do another fold like this. So even like fold, I could fold it ahead of time this time, maybe like do a little mark so I know where to put my glue down to. Oh, that is much farther than the other time. I'm not doing gobs and gobs of glue. If I want need to, I can always add more. But it's a thin layer. When I put my glue on, it's pretty thin. When you're done with your glue bottle, make sure that you close it so that it has a little white sticking on top and that there's nothing open down here. This means it's opened. This means it's closed. Thank you very much. And then set it upright so it doesn't get clogged. Nobody likes using closed, clogged glue bottles. When these are dry, um, you can glue them on this direction or this direction. I think I'm gonna go this way. I'm gonna use a glue stick for this part just because it's cleaner. I don't want to accidentally get glue on my painting. But 
a glue stick, my general rule is to press down in it for 30 seconds and it should be dried and stuck by then. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> Awesome, and I love how this looks. You can kind of see it side to side. I can roll it up for funsies. I don't know if I want my artwork all rolled up. Um, plus my glue bottle is still drying, so I'm gonna kind of let it chill for a little bit. But I think that's kind of extra lovely, an extra detail on my favorite painting. You can pick and add some chopsticks to make it look like a scroll. Your turn.